Hi everyone, welcome to part 2 of the tutorial on classical gas in the version of Tommy Emanuel. This is the second part of the series and the last part that will be released on YouTube. For full access and loads of extra help, you can check out my Patreon page. Pricing for access to the whole lesson archive starts at 3 euros a month. If you can continue on your own but you need the tablature, then click the music notes link down below. After that free time intro, it is now time to get things moving in tempo. Throughout the tutorial, I will stick to a slower and often much slower tempo than Tommy does. The verse shouldn't give you too much problems if you already got the intro down and the chorus has quite a few repeating parts that will make life a bit easier for you as well. All in all, I was surprised at the difficulty level of this section. It isn't nearly as difficult as I thought it was going to be. The tempo can be a challenge, but there is nothing too demanding in terms of stretching or complicated chords. All the way at the end, there is a separate section on the famous percussive part, but make sure to first listen, please listen, to the warning on how to approach this part. Good luck with the tune. So let's not keep you waiting any longer. Same as last lesson, the guitar is still in standard tuning and you still only need a thumb pick. Let me go through the verse one time, a bit below concert speed, and then I'm going to make sure that you get it all down as quickly as possible. Here we go. And that is the next part, I already consider that the chorus. It's always hard with an instrumental song, you can swap the two names around, but the part I just played, that is what we're going to look at first. The good news is, it isn't nearly as difficult as you might think. We're starting out with an A minor chord and a lot of the chord voicings and a lot of the, the, the fingerings are actually the same thing as the stuff you already had to play in the intro. So there won't really be that much new material for the left hand. Starting out with an A minor chord. Just as in the intro, leaving out the index finger on the B string and then hammering on as soon as you play the open B string. You start out by playing an open A string with the thumb pick and an open B string at the same time, quickly hammering on to the first fret. And arpeggiating the rest of the chord, second fret on the D string, second fret on the G string, and removing the index finger again. Low A bass note, adding in the index finger again, and then a low E bass note in between there. And then quickly pulling off from the first fret to the open string. And Tommy adds in the pinky third fret on the low E string. I tend to use the ring finger for this. Um, I don't really see any reason why not, because you actually don't need any other fingers. I guess Tommy is doing this because he can keep that A minor chord ringing out until the very last second. So see what works for you, the pinky on the low E string or the ring finger on the low E string. that move we play the exact same thing in the intro. Third fret on the low E string with an open D string, open G string, to the second fret on the low E string to an open D string and a G string, to a low, open E string down below, second fret on the D string. We are in tempo now, so this means that little part has a little bit of timing displacement going on. This is what it sounds like if you count along. One, two, three, four. Make sure you get that rhythm exactly right. One, two, three, four. With the previous bar uh, attached to that. And we 
follow that up, that low E note and that uh, E note on the second fret on the D string keeps ringing out into the next bar, we're going to add in the next melody. So that is ringing out. Only one tricky part here. So open B string and as you pull off from the second fret to the open G string you have to add in the low E string at the same time. Back to the second fret, another low E bass note and another open B string. Playing the second fret or re-picking the second fret on the D string, you normally are still holding that down. Repicking the second fret on the G string, you're normally again still holding that down. Adding in an open bass note, an open A bass string in the next bar, first beat of the next bar. Now again, it's really important to keep that low E note, those two E notes ringing out into that bar to make sure there is enough support for the melody in there. Let me attach those two previous bars to this bar. And then in this bar, it's removing those second frets on the D string and the G string. Just really quickly, plug those open strings with the index finger and the middle finger the D string and the G string and you hammer on to the second fret again. You do this two times in a row. And the last time it's just bass note and those second frets again. Again timing, little bit of displacement. This is why it would sound like if you count along. One, two, three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four. Okay, those were the first four bars. Let me play them back to back. The next bars, the beginning is sort of a variation on what you just played. Not too much difference in that first bar, you, you're using the same trick, you're playing the first fret now, pulling off to the open string instead of making a quick hammer on, sorry, making a quick hammer on, that's what it should have been. So, second, bar, second beat of the bar is the thumb pick together with the index finger on the D string and the G string, back to an open B string. Basically the same thing happens with the bass notes in between there, so pull off, A bass note, E bass note, and again that quick pull off. No difference there, that second bar is the exact same thing as we played before. Basically, again, the same thing. Make sure that low, those two low E notes keep ringing out into the next bar. Quick pull off the one we played before as an embellishment on the melody note. Same trick, as you pull off to the open string, you add in the low E string underneath. Full E minor chord, full A minor chord right behind each beat. So you get this one, two, three, four, one. That is the timing of those two chords. 
one, two, three, four, one. And that part should look familiar because it's the exact same chord shapes we played in the intro. The exact same chord shapes, but now no arpeggios anymore. We're just plucking the chord and adding a little percussive tap in between each chord. So this is what you get. Three, four. And that's the only difference is, or the only thing you really have to watch out for is the timing of that very last chord. Each chord is in between the beats. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the only chord that lands on the beat is that very last diminished chord. One more time. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Picking pattern is most of the time thumb pick and index finger and middle finger, just plucking three notes at the same time. Sticking to the B string as the top note on the A minor chord and the G over B chord. Then switching to the high E string and the B string for the C chord, for the F chord, for the D chord with F sharp in the bass, for the G chord, for the E dominant 7th chord, F sharp diminished, and G sharp diminished. All, always the same thing, B string to the E string, always plucking in between the beats and that percussive tap don't really hit the guitar. It's more of a side effect of putting the fingers back down. You don't need to put in any effort at all to create volume on these percussive clicks. So three, four. Now let me count along one more time. Three, four, one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then, and then it's on into already into the next section. Let me try and play that full verse part that we just saw all the way through really, really slowly. And I hope you can sort of pick out the last few things you need to get this into your fingers. Here we go, one more time. After that, it's straight into the chorus section. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> I'm gonna be really, I'm gonna have to be really careful not to no knock over the microphones in that section. Now, in this second part, there's quite a lot of repetition. We're starting out with a bar across the fifth fret, only basically covering the G string, B string, and high E string. This is the melody line for the very first bar. That's the first bar. Holding down that bar across the fifth fret, you are moving from the eighth fret with the pinky. and then back to the, the bar at the 5th fret again. Tommy often plays double stops in this section, so not only picking, not only picking just that melody note, but adding two strings. 
it's not always the same thing. One time it's the first two notes or the first two melody notes that, that get that uh, fifth fret on the B string on one side with them. The other time it's the first and the third note. So uh, again, this is something he plays uh, around with and it's really hard to, to, to make a definitive selection on what actually to do. So you can basically take it whatever road you want to. So that was just all of the melody notes harmonized with the double stop on the B string. If you feel that this is sort of cumbersome and is slowing you down and, and preventing you of actually reaching the full tempo, then just leave out a few of those double stops. The bass pattern is not too difficult. The first bass note is together with that melody note on the 8th fret. And then after the melody note on the pinky, you switch to the low E string. And then back to that melody note on the 5th fret on the high E string. And then a muted strum, you sort of release the pressure on the left hand and just strum softly, not too hard, with the back of the nails across the strings. Moving to a D dominant shape, basically playing pinky 7th fret on the B string, index finger 5th fret on the G string, ring finger 7th fret on the D string. That's the first bar. That melody note on the A string is already the first note of the next bar. There are different versions of that fill. Some, sometimes Tommy likes to move up the neck and play a ghost note in between there as well. The, the main melody is this. Open A string, index finger 2nd fret, middle finger 3rd fret, and then back to the open A string. Then string skip, jumping to the G string 2nd fret. And again the same uh, sort of scale run, 3rd fret, 2nd fret, open string again on the A string. During that 2nd uh, open A string, Tommy sometimes likes to move up I, I guess it's more for show than anything else because he's not actually doing anything. But in the live version on YouTube, the, the, the one with over 20 million views, he actually misses uh, one of the melody notes when he comes back. But this is what he plays on most of the other uh, live versions. Together with the first bar. That last bass note is already the bass note for the next bar. So you are not going to re-pick that bass note again. You are going to play the exact same melody, the exact same thing, but you are going to leave that bass note, that last A note ringing out. You're not going to re-pick it when you play that eighth fret melody note. So the first time together, Now ringing out. And the rest is the exact same thing, so you're just leaving out that first A bass note underneath the melody note because it is still ringing out from the previous bar. So first time again. And ringing out. Again, to an open A string, the, the rest is the exact same thing. To the low E string, muted strum, and again, the D dominant chord shape. To the uh, open A string once more, and then you're going to play a harmonic on the G and B string. On the 7th fret, on the 12th fret, and back on the 7th fret. Surprisingly for Tommy, he's actually alternating between the bass note and the melody here. He's not keeping anything going at the same time. So it's... Uh, so 
it's always alternating bass line harmonic two bass notes harmonic bass note and again a harmonic now the single time the thumb pick and the fingers together not this time those first four bars back to back Again, that last bass note of the melody note is again bound into the next bar and you're not re-picking this underneath the melody. The melody is exact, mostly the same thing. There's just one thing that's different. Most of the time when Tommy plays this, he doesn't shift to the low E in the middle of the bar, but a little bit later. So this is the last melody. And he sticks to the A note here. No muted strum, but instead of that muted strum, that is when you move to the low E string. To a D dominant voicing, bar across the 5th fret, adding in the ring finger on the 7th fret on the D string, pinky 7th fret on the B string, but with one sneaky twist, Tommy actually lifts up the index finger, giving you an open E string on top as well. So you got 5th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret, 7th fret, open E string. Together with the previous bar. And Tommy sort of used that, uses that Roughly, it's, it's not really flamenco, but he sort of uh, makes the movement, that, that circular movement with the back of the nail, sort of dragging out the attack of the chord a little bit. Next bar is mostly strumming. This is the rhythm he plays on uh, the YouTube version, uh, the YouTube studio version, uh, but you can basically fill this bar up uh, in whatever manner you like. One more time. Open E string, 2nd fret on the E string, and now we are moving into the section that changes the most, even within one version. So uh, there are going to be quite a lot of variations. The first time Tommy plays this section, it is moving around a G chord, to a C chord, to an F chord, and then to a B flat major 7th chord. The very first time Tommy plays this, he actually sticks with a thumb pick to mostly the bass strings. This is what he plays the first time. So just bass note and top note together, both on the third fret on the high and the low E string, arpeggio of the D and G string, and then C chord and he just plays the D string two times. So again, thumb pick, middle finger at the same time on this time the A string and the top E string. So going from the D G chord, C, F, small F shape, no thumb over the side of the neck needed. And again, Tommy just plays the same bass note three times. flat major 7th chord and then Tommy plays one strum going up and then the next strum going down he shifts up the index finger to the 2nd fret ending up on a B minor 7 flat 5 chord. Now first I have to talk a little bit about the timing of that previous part because there is a uh, time signature change. We are moving from a 4 beats in each bar to three beats. You probably would even have to look at it as being a 6 eighth bar, but since you will hopefully be tapping your foot along the way, it's a little bit easier to keep counting in uh, quarter notes instead of switching to eighth notes or dotted quarter notes. So we're just going to stick to the quarter notes for uh, this uh, little section. And it's a quick shift to three and then back to four. So this is the timing. Three, four, one, 
And that part we're already back in a count of four, but just that little section is missing one quarter note in each bar. You're in three instead of four. One more time. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Make sure you take that into account, otherwise the timing in that section is going to be really, really strange. So we had the G chord to C, F, B flat, strum going up, and then on the first beat of the next bar, the index finger shifts up to the second fret, and you do add in the top E string as well. That sounds open. So we get the second fret with, uh, on the A string with the index finger, third fret D string with the ring finger, second fret with the middle finger on the G string, third fret, pinky on the B string, and an open E string. And you add in the arpeggio. Nothing changes in the chord, you're just arpeggiating the chord, E string, B string, G string. So one, two, three, four, one, two, Adding in the bass, bass line going from the open A string to the third fret on the low E string to the first fret on the low E string to the open E string itself. So one, two, three, four, one, two. Adding a E dominant chord on top, open E string, second fret A string with the middle finger, second fret. D string with the ring finger, first fret on the G string with the index finger, and then third fret on the B string with the pinky, and again, open E string on top. Same arpeggio. Three, four. And a quick uh, accent on the same chord. Now the thing has changed, so three, four. Then we move into the percussive bit. I'm going to explain the percussive bit just one second. Just going to play through uh, the verse up to this point really, really slowly so we can have a last good look. So here, here we go uh, from uh, the first bar of the chorus section. Percussive bit isn't as difficult as it sounds, but I want to warn you about one thing. If you saw Tommy play this live, it is a, a, a punch in the gut, this part. It really slaps you across the face. But do remember that Tommy knows incredibly well how to use the, the volume given to him by a large PA or a large sound system. Don't try to replicate that with an acoustic guitar that isn't plugged in, because you will damage your guitar if you hit the top too hard. The speed by which Tommy does this and the volume he usually uses when he amplifies these things, he is really making light movements and the PA system amplifies this to an enormous extent. Don't kick in or hit the top of your guitar so hard that it will separate from the edges or you have bindings popping loose. Take it easy on these movements, just as a warning. 
This is what Tommy does in terms of uh, the, the percussive part. He moves up his hand all the way to the edge of the neck, giving him a really high-pitched raking sound. And you're basically just dragging the plectrum all the way to the end, to the high E string. You are aiming for that highest note to be placed on the second beat. So you get one, two, one, two. A high note lands on the second beat. Then straight after that, that rake going down, he uses the knuckles of his fingers to knock on the top of the guitar, not too loud. So one, two, and just knocking as you would on a door on the top of the guitar. One, two. Then he uses almost the same technique as a slap bass player would, and he's just tapping the, the strings on the neck, sort of around the 10th fret, and he's just slapping with fingers flat down, giving you that clicking sound. There shouldn't be any open strings ringing out after this, so just clicking down and making sure everything is silent. Three, four, one, two, three. That is where that, that first tap lands on the third beat. Three, four, one, two, three. Exactly on the third beat. Then you stretch out the fingers of this hand and you hit the strings more or less around the area in between the sound hole and the bridge. This will give you a sort of a bassy sound. As soon as you move up, that bassy sound is gone. So if you hit over the, the sound hole, you don't get that bass response, but down here there is this place where you really get that, that low end of the guitar going. But this is where you get that, you can hear, bassy sound, not bassy at all anymore. So this is just looking on your guitar where that happens. You tap that area two times. The second tap lands exactly on the fourth beat. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Really slowly, one more time. Three, four, one, two, three, four. One more tap to round it out with, and at this time Tommy has moved the left hand all the way down to the open position where you have to start uh, playing the verse section again, and he just adds one more of those muted taps like you just did on the 10th fret. And that is the full percussive part, really slowly. Three, four, one, two, three, four. That's it, that's all. Really, really slowly. Three and four and one and two and three and four and. One more time. I really want to make sure that you get this right because this is sort of the fireworks that everybody remembers when Tommy plays this song live. Three and four and one and two and three and four and. That is the basic movement of that percussive part. So let's add that to the rest of the chords. Maybe the last section uh, we just played, coming down from the, uh, the arpeggio. That's it, that, that's what Tommy is doing. One more time, around the same tempo. the tempo. That's it. That's, that's the trick he's using. Now, again, I want to stress this as, as, as hard as I can. Don't damage your guitar. This last part really, really depends or really makes an impression with a really big sound system. You're not going to get the same impact doing that 
just on your own in your room with an acoustic guitar. Uh, if you can, plug it in, you'll immediately notice that, especially these bassy taps around the, 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 that area of the bridge have, have a really deep sound and you don't really get that if you're just playing the acoustic without plugging it. Just to be careful. There's a lot left to be said about this song, but I will get to that in another lesson. Have fun with this one, take your time getting it all into your fingers, and I'll see you again for the bridge and all of those uh, Walk Don't Run and, and Gloria uh, sort of bits that Tommy adds into the middle part. See you there, bye bye.